Greetings and welcome back to another episode of 10 Feet Away from Ben Gray. I am your host, Ben Gray. Joining us this week is Ms. Lena Forbes. Lena is a senior at Wheaton North High School. This is back-to-back high school seniors from Wheaton North. It's exciting. (laughs) Uh, And you're also a member of Cornerstone Youth Group. So, Lena, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm excited. (laughs) So this week, we're actually going to continue to jump around. We're in John chapter 3. One of the most famous verses in all of Scripture uh, is in John chapter 3, and we're going to talk about that briefly. But before we get into that, if you had to give up one of your five senses, which one would you give up of the five? Um... Probably smelling, like scent. Why? I feel like it's not that... Well, then you can't taste, though. I don't... Or you wait, can't taste as well. As well. Um, but I feel like that has, like, the least function, you know? That's true. You can, you can like, very easily survive. Yeah, without, without being able to smell. Smell. All right, actual first question for you, because we're in John chapter 3. This is verse 3. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How do you interpret Jesus' words? born again. And to be fair to you, Nicodemus doesn't understand this. Yeah. How do you, how do you interpret that? I know when I first heard that and read that, I had no idea. I was right along with Nicodemus. I, I, yeah. Um, and then I started thinking of like born again and like, it talks about like water, I think a little bit. Um, water and the spirit yes, and flesh and yes. yeah. And then I went right to like baptism because that's what I link with like water and stuff. But then it's talking about this whole rebirth idea, which baptism, I feel like I associate with like babies, even though like personally, I wasn't baptized till I was like when I got confirmed. So like seventh grade or whatever. So, but I feel like I still associate it with babies. And this is more the, of the idea of like old people, you know, or not old people, but like but further in your, yes, adults. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, that, that was often the case when John the Baptist was baptizing people, including Jesus. He wasn't baptizing babies. He was baptizing yes. adults. Yeah. So your interpretation of this, what Jesus is saying is that you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you're baptized. Yeah. Yes. What is it about baptism that gives you that pass into the kingdom of heaven? I don't know. And I don't know if I like that because I don't think I agree with that. You don't agree with the idea that you have to be baptized to go to heaven? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a, I don't think, I think that's a me thing and not like a Christian thing or like a, you know, my friends that like are like atheists or like don't necessarily go to church or who believe completely different things and haven't been baptized. I don't like have this view that after they die, that they won't be going to heaven or going to some, whether it's the same place that I'm going or not, but some happy place, you sure. know? And I don't think that you have to be like baptized a certain way and go through the, the steps to get there. But I don't know if that's answering your question either. Well, and that's, it brings us back to, that, back to the same question of Jesus yes. saying that you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again. So what does yeah. it actually mean then to be born again? To be born again. Do you, have, do you consider yourself to be born again? No, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm also at a point in my life where I definitely like just have so many other things going on. And I think this quarantine has also contributed to it (laughs) that I haven't exactly been putting like church and God like first or like anywhere, like I need to start bringing that back. So I don't think I've discovered like the kind of spiritual religious element of things yet. And I think also like even with that baptism thing, like I'm still figuring out what I believe and what I think. And I feel like I don't know if I'll ever get there, but once I get to a better understanding of like exactly what I believe and like what the spirit like means to me and what all of this means to me, then I think that's what I'm going to say would be rebirth in my okay. opinion. I don't know if that's anywhere near correct, but I it's guess part that's, of your journey. yeah, I guess that's how I'm viewing it for me. We have this sense that, you know, once I'm born again, everything will be better. Or once I get close enough to God, everything will be better. But it's not how it works. I mean, you talk to someone who's been a faithful follower of God for 80 or 90 or 100 years, (laughs) and they will tell you that you never stop the journey. Uh, And the analogy that I heard that I thought was really uh, apt is that, let's say you were on a diet and you were trying to lose weight. uh, And you're successful and you're losing 30 pounds, let's say. And you've met your goal weight and you're there. You don't just stop eating healthy and exercising. Yeah. Because what happens? You gain it all back. back. Like you just yeah. So if you ever get to a point where you feel like you're actually getting closer to God or you feel, you know, spiritually enlightened or you feel like, hey, I am born again, whatever the language you want to use is, that doesn't mean that you're done. 
That okay, process true. is never stopping. I guess it's just because I, like, I haven't necessarily experienced it, and it's hard to like describe something that you haven't experienced. Have you experienced but, something that you would describe as like a mountaintop spiritual experience or no? Like I know, I, I guess I did have a moment where I was like, okay, I am happy. Like when I go to church, I'm happy. I like the, I love the feeling of being at church. I love like youth group that comes with church. I love like the atmosphere of church, like the music, everything. It's just a matter of figuring out that whole, like, so I guess that was a moment is like figuring out that that's what I like. And like, that's what I believe for right now. Hmm. Um, but I think like, as in the last like couple of years, I've been like, I'll hear different sermons and I'm like, okay, like, yes, I completely agree with this part and this part. I don't know. Maybe I need to look a little more into that for like myself, you know, need to wrestle with it more. Yes. Yeah. John 3.16 is one of the most famous passages of scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll actually read that one because this is, this one's good. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So that's verse 16, and that's, it ends right there. But verse 17 goes on, and it's part of the same sentence, it's part of the same um, teaching. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And so my question for you is when, he, when Jesus is saying that he's been brought to the world to save the world, what is the world? If I'm thinking like world, I'm thinking everything that like God created on our earth. So that includes like animals, plants, like the climate, the, I don't know, the humans. So I guess all of that, but I don't know. <laughs> Is the moon included? Sure. <laughs> That's so hard. Um, what is the world? What, what needed to be saved, I guess? That. Is a great question. Yeah. What needs to be saved? Yeah. Do people need to be saved? I think humanity okay is kind of messed so. up. Yeah. Like okay. I think there's parts of society, humanity, everything that like could use some saving. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Do dogs need saving? Maybe. I don't. I don't know what a dog brain is. That's the hard thing. Yeah. Because I guess it comes to like. But at the same time, if you. This is, I don't know my answer for this one, okay. I guess. Saved. I don't like the word saved. I think Why, that's yeah, what, what I'm... That? Why don't you like saved? I don't know. I guess it, it like means that then I'm like broken, like something's yeah, wrong with it me. It implies which, negative. I'm not saying I'm like perfect. I know I'm not perfect. Like, you know, there are some parts of me that definitely I need to work on. Like going outside of like religion for a second. I guess I'm almost imagining like, like some, like some Superman, like swooping in and like, saving me and like fixing all of my problems and I feel like I don't like that but <laughs> but then if I look at it from like a religious standpoint and I'm like okay it's just like a spirit like within me and it's like God maybe guiding me through my discovery of like fixing the parts of me that like aren't as good as they could be type thing then I guess that I'm more okay with I don't I don't know what I'm getting stuck on, but it's something it's the word in saved, there. Though. The, I think the it's saved, though. The implication that you're in danger or you're heading down the wrong path. Yes. If it weren't for someone coming along and helping. Yeah. And I think it's like this some, like, like a, another, I'm picturing like a physical, like, like a being that's just like, okay, you have to follow this step. Like I do this to be like the perfect human and then you're saved and you're set for life. Like, I don't like that. Are you comfortable with the fact that the earth needs to be saved? Yes. But you're not as comfortable, especially on an individual level of saying that. Yeah, which I don't know why. Eva, and I feel like. Eva has to be saved. Tony has to be saved. Yeah, Morgan like no. Morgan or I... Batty have to be saved. Because I... there's the same yeah. implication that there's something wrong with those people. Yeah, which Caroline I don't like. Caroline is broken and needs someone to save her. Yeah, see that I completely no. Like <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. like she's and and I think it's also just because I'm such a fan of like especially like within our youth group, how diverse that group of people is. And I like love each of the different parts of each and every human that comes in that room every week. And so it like implying that like, oh, we need to save like this part of this person and this part of then I'm like, we're all just gonna be like robots. It's like, okay, we're all doing the same thing every day. We're all like fixed perfect we're just gonna go on our path like living as like robotic people what i now that i'm saying that i guess i associate saving with then becoming like you've lost your, your individuality your individuality yes. yeah. yeah i think you've that's been, yeah 
you've been smashed into a mold that fits whatever idea of being saved is. Yeah. You lose that autonomy. Yeah. Free will I is guess. removed from the equation. Which I don't like. Yeah. And then if we go back to the whole saving, if we're just, I'm just really stuck on that question, I guess. But if we go back to that. Let's use the word healing. Yes. If I broke my leg mm -hmm. and they put a cast on it, the doctor is going to reset the bone, yeah. put a cast on it, and it's going to heal. My leg's the same. It's still my leg. It's still my bones. It's still my muscle. Yeah. It's just going through the process of healing. Yeah. It was broken. That doesn't mean that it was, you know, they didn't cut my leg off and throw yeah. it into the fire. It just needed to be healed. And even going along with that, even if you have to put in some like metal rods to make that bone sit straight, like that's just It gonna... doesn't make it not your own leg. Yeah. It's still that, it's still the same thing. Wow. It's just in the process of healing. So God so loved the world that he gave yeah. his only son not to condemn the world, but to heal the world. To bring a little bit of light. Yeah. Oh, my mind is blown. Is that a little bit better light? Yes, I like that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This has been another week of 10 Feet Away from Ben Gray. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And thank you so much to Lena for coming along for this episode. If you're interested in joining us as a guest, please let us know. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. I love that language of <laughs> I, I found Jesus. And I yes. know lots of people that use that language. I don't personally. Yeah. But I love it because it gives the idea that Jesus was hiding at some point <laughs> yeah. and that it was like, oh, you found me. Good job. Yeah.